keep up with. I see some heads nodding. Is that making sense a little bit? You got to know where you started, right? Now, the interactive simulator, this is for everyone to use that, that wants to, but this is what we do. We, uh, you refer me somebody, we hop on the call, we go to allinoneloan.com, we start a simulation, we compare it. This is the exact example. We're just, we input this data, right? It's very simple. We've really simplified this. We're proud of the simulator. We're talking about what, the, what their income is, right? And as we go, we got their expenses and the results. Now, the rates and assumptions and the pay down. You get a little code it generates when you do your, uh, your simulator. So that like if I went over it with uh, someone during the day and their wife wanted to look at it, well, they can save that and we can look at it later. All right. Now, the interest rates are not fixed. So the reason why is because it gives the, you know, you can fix it for three years or five years. But we wanted to have the customer have the ultimate most control. If you fix the rate, then we've got to do an amortization schedule. Now you can't get your money in and out. So that's really the reason why. Um, you know, if we were to fix it, we'd have to include some sort of amortization, and we didn't really want to do that. So it gives them more control over their debt and their balance on a daily basis. So here, you're just looking at the pay down time, 50 months. This is where he's at. This is where they would be on a traditional loan. I'm gonna pause for any questions if anybody's got any. Now, here's what's interesting. Over here, the average APR was 6% on the traditional loan. The average pay down, he pays about 3% of the balance down per year. Over here, we're paying down about 6% of the balance per year and the APR, the comparison loan APR, is essentially saying that this loan, this loan would have to have a 4% APR in order to the same interest, to, to cost you the same. Or conversely, it would have to, it would be, if it was at 9.4, this loan would have to be 9.47 instead of 7.9 in order to cost the same amount as over here. And on the simulator, we always use a rate that's higher, like 2% higher than what it is now. And you, what you'll find is that even when you change the rate, a point, half point, two points, the pay down time might change in a matter of months, maybe a year or so. It's not that much difference like it would be, hey, I got a 30 year loan and what's the difference between 6% and 5% or 6% and 7%. Then you're gonna see a pretty massive difference. Now, I'm gonna tell you some credit allowance. This is kind of uh, more along the lines of what people need to do to qualify talked a little bit about this so you would have pmi if it was a 10 if you did a 10 percent down 10 percent down loan but it's a single premium uh, meaning it's a one and done you're not on, you don't have a monthly pmi second homes the, the ltv the loan to value is reduced a little bit you can't go to 90 right investment properties same thing reduced a little bit still so i do a lot of loans for people that you know, they have an investment property, they have a lot of liquidity, or they have a primary residence that has a lot of liquidity, and then what they do is they'll say, we'll do the all-in-one loan, and they'll pay off and free up the, the other pro property free and clear completely. Maybe they got an HBR, uh, and they live in one, and the other one they rent out on the same, you know, they got a two-pad lot, right? Now, the interest rates we talked about, not fixed. Um, there's no impound account. Property tax insurance, you paid separately. There's no reason for you to be sending your money to Chase, Countrywide, or CMG. Let them hold it for the whole year. You're, in this case, 12 grand, you know. But whatever it is, we know that that's money that, you know, you, you pay your own tax insurance. There's no escrow account anymore. We talked about the delayed financing. 20 properties, what does that mean? So regular financing, you have like 10 properties. I'll, I'll read this to you so you don't have to... But like you're 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 you have a, a cap, so you can't have like 35, you know, finance properties and expect to go down until you can get a conventional loan. It doesn't work that way. It's you're capped at 10. So here you can have 20 properties when the subject property is an investment property. That's when it comes up. It's not necessarily when you're doing a primary residence. When your subject property is an investment property, that's when the lender says, "Well, how many other ones are you do you have financed that are like this subject property?" Meaning it's an investment property. 
you're only you're only allowed to have up to 10. Well, no, all in one, we say, oh, you can have up to 20, okay? So non-traditional in that regard. Um, that's pretty much it, but I'm going to, let's see here. How do I, this is Ben Stein. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I play that. But he talks about, um, basically he tells a little story about Jack and Jill and they have, both have the same house, both same financing, but Jack's money doesn't really help him. You know, they make the same amount of money. Jill's money is left behind, it helps her. I'll figure out how to play that later and we'll play it. But what I want to do is show you here on my uh, the next page. This is how to follow me. This is my podcast, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I'm actually shooting two uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, and two, just real quick. Do we have questions? Yeah. We'll have questions. Everybody understood all that? So They're much better than I am because I did. Lisa. <laughs> so Mark, very simple, right? If if the account is getting sweeped every night. Yes, ma'am. And I wrote a check today and you've swept the account. How does that work? How does how does that Yeah, because you have the liquidity. So you still have you have credit availability. Okay. So you got paid the ten grand from went from six forty to six thirty. Now you wrote a five hundred dollar check. We have still availability. You see, so instead of looking at your balance, your your account balance that says $10,000, instead what you're seeing is that you're seeing a line that has a balance of 630 instead of 640. And so then you know I have $10,000 to work with. Or if you're like me, where we had a house that, uh, we live in Chestnut Bend, you know where is? It's behind Franklin High School. So our kitchen needed to be updated. So we had about a $450,000 or $400,000 old all-in-one loan. And I didn't have enough to do this build down, which was way more than what we thought. It was $250,000. We did our kitchen, all this is way more than what we thought. So what we did is we ended up combining those two after it was all done. Now I got a house instead of 1.1, now it's worth 1.5 or whatever it is now. And so what happens though is I set the line limit at 80% of the 1.5, but I only owe 650, but I got a line of 1.1. So I can, Brian sends me a deal, Chan sends me a deal, we're ready to, you know, I can utilize those funds to buy other cash flow producing assets. But but back to the subject we were talking about with, hey, how, what does my account balance look like? That mean, my, my line is gonna say 1.1. Now, clearly, I didn't deposit at the beginning of the loan $400,000. Right, you know, my I would want to start out as a reference point of 640, and then anything I put in there after that is what I added to the equation. I mean, did you see what I'm saying? I, I paid it down, so it's just a paradigm shift of looking at your the way you're looking at your money. You're looking at what what you have available to use, because the the bank account we're saying it's not doing you any good to stay there. Let's sweep it and pay down your balance tonight. And when you need it, you just call on it and to when you need it. Just like you would in a normal bank account. Okay. So you had a question right Was that? Was that put his contact info back. Yeah. Yeah, so. Go, um, go backwards. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see if I can play this. Okay. I guess I can't. Man, I really wanted to play this. I had these. Does anybody know how to do it? Because <laughs> uh, I have these two testimonials from agents okay. and then one's a CPA. But anyway, if you Google. It's really funny. It's like two minutes long, but you know, he even does a little Bueller thing in the middle of it. <laughs> um, but right here is going to be where you can contact me uh, on that first slide or Instagram. If you go there, you know, there's a link inside there. So you just, you know how to use this QR code thing. Let's see here. Let's go to presenter mode here. Right. Yeah. There we go. There you go. All right. Um, and then the first page uh, is where it's really my contact info, so we can scroll back to that. But really, if you go here, you can get it, or, unless you're not on Instagram. But you want to scan that QR code because it'll go right to you. Uh, it'll go right to the account. Can I Jenna? just say, I Yes, ma'am. You have questions? Yeah. yeah. Jan? So I'm 
I'm a little mind boggled by this, so I'm going to have to do a little more studying. But am I am I to understand that the um, when that is swept and when the credit the the interest rate is posted or whatever, that is an APR. It's going to follow whatever the interest rate. That's are right. Regard, right. 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 So the 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 let's say I have a, a home loan with six percent with the thirty percent. I'm paying all of it up front. You know, all my my interest up front, but it is a fixed amount. You're basically hedging against the future using the delta between what the the savings of. Yeah, know. because the reality is, is that in that thirty year loan, the way it's designed, unless you pay extra, and and we talked about why you wouldn't do that, because well, why wouldn't we do that? Because we can't get it back. So the only reason you can, only way you can get the money back out is to go do something like a hodgepodge of go get a second lien. Right. You know, and so, but even then, when you get the second lien, you you're you you're not. There's nothing. You're not getting on. Not this is a Ferrari or or, or, yeah. or like a, a Ducati. You, you know, you don't want to get on the moped, which is what the old way was. Sure. The Ducati is what's going to is the checking account that is the the engages the mortgage so the mortgage you use it the mortgage you deposit sweeps pays down your balance that's where the power of it is well i get i get that so i uh, and you probably can already guess this about me is i'm looking at the the gotchas you know all right so <laughs> yeah. why gotcha? right. right so if i am doing this then what are what are the gotchas for this because clearly i want to you know obviously i have to be credit worthy right right i have to be able to be mindful that i don't want to be upside down right right i mean well you, you wouldn't be because the, the house is worth 800 and it's going to go, only go up to 640. we're only going to cap we're capped at 640. so you're not allowed to go up to 800 and be at zero equity so you had to put 20 percent down on the house in this example right you did 800 640 so that's 160 was the 20 percent so then what would cause you to where you had no income coming in to where that dripped up to 640 like that's what would actually have to happen and, and if you were in the regular world we'd be really screwed then because if you like how would you you know what i mean like if i can't pay any payments right now like right. i don't have any income well, now you're really in a, in a pickle because, you know, Countrywide or Chase or whatever, they're going to want their money. And if, and if you get a second, and, and if you got a second <laughs> lien, they're going to want their money too, yeah. right? Whereas here, you literally can have no income one month. Well, I can see or $500 worth of income or 100000 And by the way, guess what? People will ask this. Well, hey, I've got this uh, 20000 that's over here in this money market account, 100000 50000 whatever. Would it be a good idea to move that over to this? And it's like, well, let's think about it. It is, right, George? Because it's just over here making nothing in the money market. We'll call it nothing because it's virtually nothing. But now all of a sudden, and, and you wouldn't put it into your mortgage, your 30-year mortgage, because it's gone, by moose. And they're going to still charge you the same $3,000 payment on your mortgage. So if you do get into a situation, you, it's just there's no flexibility. You can't get your money back out. It's rigid. It's one way. It was designed in 1938 in order for it to be that small payment fixed to entice people to come back in the market. But if you, every single time you make deposits that's going down, then it's just based on how you're living. You know, you're spending less than you make. My best friend uh, grew up in Toronto, just outside Toronto. He's a music executive now. But his dad had a grocery store. It's exactly how his dad ran his grocery store. Just like this, like I described with the landscaping. That's how he did it. They had all this money coming in every month or every weekend, and but then they did they, they spent less than they make. So the got you is it's not for somebody who um, is not good saver or not good with their budgeting and some sort of like they just live flippantly. Um, but that's the reason why it's designed with certain catch falls in like you got to have 10 percent reserves you got to have a 700 credit score you've got a 43 percent debt to income ratio or less these are all honestly just yeah. kind of common sense underwriting anyway but i don't know if you guys know this but people can get 40 can get approved for 45 percent debt to income ratio because it just you know it, it it's working off of on regular loans on on traditional loans 
Where's the ten percent reserve held? Well, it, where is it now? Where is it held? If it's well, it's just yeah. yeah. So it's just required for documentation purposes to show that that you guys have that you had it. So I got to show just like when you let's say in addition to your hundred sixty you had to put down. You know, most people are going to not put every single dollar that they put down. They've got some other money somewhere. In Fannie and Freddie world, they may only require two months reserves. You know, in this case, we're saying you got to, and it's it's your money wherever. So if you gave me your uh, TIA CREF or your Vanguard account statement, it says you got a hundred thousand. You've more than met that. You got sixty two thousand, sixty four thousand. You've met the requirements. You're not. We're not messing with that money at all. It's your money. It's just that's the requirement in order to get qualified. Is you got to have some sort of reserve, and it happens to be ten percent of what the line is.